Surprisingly, one of the most widespread contaminants of groundwater is not toxic chemicals, it's salt. When sea level rises, salt water floods the land surface. That water flows down into the groundwater system and contaminates our freshwater resources. We study the processes of mixing between salt water and fresh water in the subsurface, which have implications, one, for drinking water supply, only 1% of salt water is needed to ruin freshwater resources, and two, release of contaminants that have been immobilized in soils. In order to understand the potential impacts of sea level rise on contaminant release in the environment, we use several tools. One is computer modeling. We simulate the physical processes of groundwater flow in the subsurface. Another tool is field measurements. We install wells and measure water levels, and we also take samples of soil and groundwater. With soil scientists, we use X-ray fluorescent spectroscopy generated from very bright X-rays to detect specific contaminants in our soil. In this image, the red areas are locations of high concentrations of arsenic in one of our samples from Delaware. This was captured at the Stanford Synchrotron Radiation Laboratory. As we think about the risks associated with sea level rise and contamination, as a behavioral economist, I think of two different types of risks. Objective risks that are measured by scientists and subjective risks that are created by people based on perceptual cues, following the media, discussions with their neighbors and friends. From a policy perspective, we would like to think that those things are identical in helping us evaluate the problem. However, in many cases, we find that they are not the same. Environmental sciences are interdisciplinary. We study the physics of how groundwater flows, but the physics affects the chemistry, which affects the biology. And the natural science processes are all affected by what we do as humans, so the social sciences are important as well. In the case of contamination, one often finds that for a specific site, scientists measure the risks as relatively low, yet those who live nearby perceive the risks as quite high. Wealth is a key factor in determining how individuals respond to these risks. Low-income individuals may have a hard time moving away from risks that they perceive as too high. Thus, we have ethical issues as we think about policy. How do we think about fairness, efficiency, and ultimately designing the type of society in which we want to live? The contaminated sites that we have here in Delaware are similar to contaminated sites that occur in coastal regions worldwide. So what we're learning here, we can then apply to the rest of the world.